Hi guys, how are you? This is Zura and today we are going to talk about ES8 async and await keywords, which makes code super, super readable. Promises are good, really good. Um, it makes code much more readable than nested callbacks, but if you use async and await keywords, that makes code even more and much more readable. This is my previous code again, and let's try to convert this code using async and await keywords, and then we can compare them. So I'm gonna copy my code, just comment it, collapse it, and paste it here. And now I'm gonna use my async and await keywords to rewrite this code. Here is my code rewrite it using async and await keywords. Await keyword is used before promise. Remember, the request method returns a promise. So, await keyword is used before the promise and it tells the engine, hey, the following code is a promise it re or it returns a promise. I'm going to wait here until the promise is resolved and return the actual result value and save it in this variable. This code will return a user's variable and save it. We don't need then, we don't need callback at all. We are just writing a wait keyword in front of promise and returns the actual value which we are interested in. If I write the request here without a wait, users will be a promise, but if I write a wait here in, in front of promise, this will open the promise, unwrap a promise, unwrap a resolved promise, and take the value from it and assign it to a variable. And I'm printing my users, then I'm taking users uh, zero and fetching posts with the await keyword, and here are my posts, and uh, then I'm doing the same thing for comments, and here are my comments, and that's all, and here is my result. We have three console log statements for users, posts, and comments. I haven't mentioned anything about async. You can't actually use await keyword if you are not in asynchronous function. So, async keyword is used before a function declaration or function expression, await keyword is used in front of promise. If I delete my async keyword here, if I run the code, I have an error. Await is only valid in async function. So I cannot actually write uh, my await directly in my file. I need to, to use my await in the function, in the asynchronous function. That's because we don't want to block our execution of file and wait on a single line. In the following code, code stays at this line. The, co the engine executes my asynchronous get data uh, function. The code stays at this line, but the thing is that my asynchronous function, this function, the whole function, runs asynchronously in a different process. If I write console log statement, before function and after function, both of them are printed and then I am getting my callbacks. So this function runs in an independent process, so I, I can do whatever I want there and I don't block my, my user interface. What about handling errors? If I have some error in my request URL or if the API returns error, I need to handle it, right? I don't have my then, thus I don't have my catch. Handling errors using async and await are done by try and catch statements. Try this code and catch here. 
and if I have a mistake in my URL, I have it in my catch on line 25. Here it is. You can actually use your async function without a wait keyword at all to do some asynchronous code which needs time. In one of my previous videos, when I introduced asynchronous programming, I had the code to some numbers from 0 to 1 billion. You can put this code here and this code will run asynchronously in a different process and will not block user interface. Let's compare this now to our code using promise chaining. We have a lot of uh, then statements here and callback functions. Here we just have variable assignments, nothing else. As I mentioned before, async and await keywords are part of ES8, so be careful when using it. Maybe your browser or your Node.js environment doesn't support it yet. This is the end of the video. I hope you understand uh, how async and await keywords work. If so, please click on like and subscribe buttons to stay tuned. In the next video, we will talk about new JavaScript fetch API, which is for which is an interface for fetching resources. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.